This is one of the very first demonstrations I did as a new teacher. I graduated college as a chemical engineer. I did that for a year and go, you know, if I have to do this the rest of my life, it's not going to be a good thing. This isn't for me. It's for some people. It's for many people. It's a good paying job. But I said, I want to teach. I didn't have to take any education courses when I first started. They were so desperate for science teachers. They said, have you had some chemistry? I said, yes, you can teach. But you had to pick up the education courses or maybe be tainted by them later on. But over five years, I had to pick them up. So I started teaching. And I realized rather quickly that you don't just lecture to kids. I mean, you could do that, but then your class would sleep 24 to 30. I found out that demonstrations seem to work for getting kids' attention. So I'm reading in a book about solubility. How am I going to get this idea about solubility of gases across to students? And here's this thing called the ammonia fountain. So I'm reading it. Now I want you to keep in mind that in the late 60s and early 70s, demonstration books did not have much in the way of safety. You were supposed to know that a priori. You know, I don't know where, but you were supposed to know that. So I get out the ammonia flask, the ammonia fountain, and I found in the back room a flask. The problem was it was a flat bottom flask. It didn't say anything about that in there, and I used it. That was not a good thing. And we'll, because a flat bottom flask, the glass is stressed. It was also much thinner than this. Uh, it's important that you use a fairly thick walled flask and one that's got a round bottom. Okay. Because otherwise, under pressure, this will implode. I know. I have firsthand experience with that. It did that in my class in front of my students. There were no safety warnings about that. So that's an important thing. The other part of the setup involves this stopper, OK? A dropper filled with water and a glass tube, and there's a taper on the end. Now, you make this simply by heating the glass, rotating it slowly, and then pulling it, and you'll get a nice point, something like this. The opening isn't that critical. And you can use this demonstration, not just for solubilities of gases, but you can use it when you're talking about polar molecules, nonpolar, hydrogen bonding, acid base indicators, because the liquid I have down here is a 0.04% bromothymol blue solution, and it's in a slightly acidic solution. We're going to make it basic and have it turn blue. Now, this is not how I would do this for my students. I wouldn't tell them all the stuff I'm telling you. I'm telling you so that you can reproduce this. This is Windex. Windex contains ammonia. It says, in fact, it's kind of neat. It says it contains ammonia D. Now, I don't know what the D stands for. Maybe deuterium instead of regular hydrogen. Maybe that's why it's so good at cleaning. I'm not sure what the, the D part means. But this is filled with ammonia gas. And ammonia gas has an affinity for water. It's very soluble in water. Now, we fill this with a, a cylinder of ammonia gas in the hood, which we're lucky to have. I didn't have ammonia gas when I first did this. I had to do it the old-fashioned way. Now, there's a drawing on the board. Can you guys get that drawing on the board? Just walk over here. This is a concentrated ammonia solution. Some people would call it ammonia hydroxide. You would heat this up. The gas would come out because it's less soluble when it's heated. It would come up here and fill up the flask. You have to be careful when you do that in a hood because it smells really bad and it's toxic if you get a good whiff of it. And two, you have to heat it slowly so you just get the gas and not the water vapor up in there because if you get the water vapor up in here, it's going to be soluble and the gas will dissolve. So I'm going to take this setup now and I'm going to put this in here, take this stepper out, put this in there as fast as I can, and then I'm going to squeeze the dropper Okay, and we're going to see what happens. So here goes. Theory guides, experiment decides. Okay. Now, not much is happening yet. Oh, nice. All right. Now I'm about to squeeze the dropper. And we're going to see what happens. There it is. It's being drawn up. And as it's drawn up, 
more and more liquid gets drawn up because it creates a partial vacuum. You can actually hear it, perhaps. So I'm going to shut up, which is hard to do. Oh, we get that nice flushing sound at the end. If I had more water in there, and on purpose, because I like that sound, I didn't let it fill up. It'll fill up almost to the very top. The color changes because this is now a basic solution. Ammonia has a very high solubility in water, and because both water and ammonia have hydrogen bonds. In fact, that's what this T-shirt is all about right here. Uh, here we have fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, etc. This is uh, in Swedish. Some Swedish friends of mine gave it when we did a workshop in Sweden. And if you speak Swedish, you can read the T-shirt. This is what I call T-shirt chemistry. If you're Swedish, you can pronounce this word, Funkebush. But most of us can just look at the periodic table and get some feel for the electronegativity, which is what this is talking about. And we can relate that to bonding. In this case, oxygen, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen are so electronegative that when these bond with hydrogen, you can have hydrogen bonding between molecules. Now, this is very confusing for the kids because you have both inter- and intramolecular forces. In this case, what we were looking at was the solubility of ammonia in a solution, and in water. Ammonia is very soluble in water, so again, when we squirted this, the water went up in there, the ammonia gas started to dissolve in it, creating a partial vacuum. The vacuum then drew more water up, which uh, made more ammonia dissolve, and it kept going and going and going and feeding on itself and gave this nice color change because of the indicator. And again, I would try to get my students to explain, one, what's happening with the color change if we talked about acid-base indicators. Two, why was it drawn up? Hopefully they've read something. <laughs> on solubility the night before. Maybe they'd done an experiment with it so that, that you could try to get them to do the explanation. Here I was trying to show you how all the equipment worked because it's a little bit complicated, but not too bad. 